Toby Jones, congratulations oh, on being in a Michael Haneke well, film. Exactly, exactly. It's a kind of dream fulfilled. A, a dream I didn't realise would ever be fulfilled, but is now fulfilled. Yeah, is it, is it one of those people? Because, I mean, as an actor, you sort of think, well, I'd like to work for the great directors. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know. and, 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 and then you think, well, that's... There are certain directors who think, well, of course, I'd love to work with them, but it's, it's not very likely. And then my agent rang up and said, uh, there's a director called Michael Haneke. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, although I couldn't really believe it. And there was with some nerves that I then went to meet him. And then you realise that he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything without... Like, the more preparation than anyone I've ever met. Mm. So he'd seen pretty much every film I've ever done. <laughs> right. And he knew that I, I was the guy he wanted. Like that. Wow. Which is... Had he seen Dad's Army? But I'm not sure if he'd seen Dad's Army. I didn't ask him specifically on Dad's Army. <laughs> but, I mean, no, but it is... It was extraordinary, because I was so... Not many people make me nervous anymore, but I was nervous to meet him because I'm a big fan. Yeah, and, you, know, you, wow. are, you, you You think, well, I hope I don't screw this up. Yeah. Because, I mean, sometimes it is about the directors because you think, well, like, you know, you just want to be in that company. And because you've got Jean Louis Trantagnon yeah. and Isabelle yeah. Huppert yeah. as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think most people, because you know, you're and Toby Jones, yeah. it's almost like a sort of little, almost like a joke at the end. And Toby Jones. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, that in the, with the utmost respect, yeah, yeah. as you know. But it, it did seem a sort of left field kind of character. And I suppose that he is one. I mean, that, a surprising casting results in a sort of surprise character. Yes. I mean, I haven't seen the film yet, but I know that. Tonally, you know, Hanukkah, you know, there's so much to say about Hanukkah, but the, the, but one of the key things that strikes me about his cinema is that he's very interested in modulating tone. And, and he, when I read the script, I went, this is an extraordinary script. It's not, it's not straightforward what's being said. There's no, as usual, there's no judgment. There's no assessment. The judgment's for the audience. There's no hope. There's no help. There's no hope. No, no, no. <laughs> and I, and so, like I say, I, I, I could only feel like, well, it's deliberate what he, what he asked me to do. Uh, I, I don't know that... It, I, I haven't seen the film, but I don't know if it's meant to be comic. I certainly didn't feel I was meant to be a comic character. No, well, it's not a... Co no. Well, I mean, people come out and sort of said, oh, I found that funny. Or they, I said, well, that bit's a bit odd. And they said, well, I found that very funny. And some people said, well, I found that sort of utterly devastating. And I said, oh, no, I found that sort of black yes. comic. That's what I mean, the tonal thing. Yeah, so, I don't, so I don't know how you, you play it. Uh, well, when, he, when I was... When we were working on it, what struck me most was I, I think he liked... He liked the tenderness that I brought to the character, that it wasn't a banker, you know, that there was a sort of tenderness. And I think that there's that element of someone coming... I mean, I don't know because he would never answer that sort of question, but I, I, my, my own interpretation of it was this was an entirely practical arrangement uh, and that my character, he takes the time to show that my character is as lonely as everyone yeah. else, is as detached as everyone else, and he, takes, he bothers to put that in. And I thought that was very interesting. The well, idea. Tell us, I mean, for those who haven't seen it, which includes yeah. you at this yeah, moment, yeah. surprisingly, because your premiere is tonight, yeah. um, describe your character and what he is, because he, he, he does come from a strange place. I mean, I, I, I don't want to reveal too much to anyone, but you, you, you sort of have an affair with Isabelle Huppert's yeah, 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 yeah. character. But it's a business, as he said, business, you're, you're a business. Yes, interest and there's a hint of corruption, and there's a hint of. The whole film is for reeks of decadence, but I mean, there there's a sense of. Of corruption, but also isolation. That you know, there's a relationship going on. But how possible is it for people who are in this world to have relationships? How how possible is it for people to are you in the declare affection? You're in the insur Is it your insurance game that you're yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, in? I'm trying yeah. to sort of sort out this so we can do the takeover. Yeah. There's a sort of how can we get around this terrible accident? Yes. Yeah. And you're. I mean, like, you think that you're nice because you're great. You're played by Toby Jones, and then you're. But, there's a certain finality about your character yeah. and yeah, your yeah. kind of sleeping with her and also... But that's, that's the idea. I think that's always his idea, is that you're not allowed to settle into anything. Mm. Uh, someone asked at the press conference this morning, and said, oh, tell us about the Calais uh, migrants, as if he was going to say some big point about immigration. I think his point is, it's happening. Mm. This is happening in the corner of our eye all the time. This, this stuff, you know, we are... Like that, all the time. Everything is mediated by these this, this sort of noise all yeah. the time. 
And I think that that's his point as much as anything else. Well, when you say the corner of the screen, you're absolutely right. I mean, he's, he's the classic corner of the screen. Well, I put it in there, you just didn't see it because yeah. I was doing some prestidigitation over yeah, the yeah, corner yeah. there and, yeah. you know, distracted. It's, I can't tell you how precise every single frame is that... Um, I have no doubt because talking to my colleagues this morning, they said... I said, how is the film? They said, it's what we read in the script. It's exactly right. right. Because there's no coverage. There's no reaction shots. No. There's no. It's like, we shot that bit, and that's that bit of the story. And that's why we shoot it 28 times, because it, that, there's, no, there's going to be no cutaways. That's so what you, what the 20, 28 takes almost always? No, no. Right. 28 takes on one little three-line exchange I did, and then there was one where 12 of us were in a scene, and we did 49 takes of that. Is that the party scene, yeah. the, 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 the engagement scene? Yeah. <laughs> right. And you don't, I mean, because it's so long and detached, you kind of think it's all done in one kind of. So presumably yeah. he goes from the top each time. We don't kind of retake yes, that. Exactly. Yeah. But that. Yes, you do the whole thing all the time because there's nothing to cut to. Mm. That's why he has to get it right. It's, it's real tightrope walking cinema mm-hmm. because he's got, when he goes to the edit suite, he's got what he's got. He, so he has to get it. Yeah. You know. What's he like? I mean, I've, I've met him. Uh, and he's one of those people that you always think, oh, they're going to be very austere, scary and austere. Yeah. But he's actually very warm and, very, and, and very mentorish warm. and kind of avuncular in a way. Well, I think when we look at, you know, people talk about the coolness of the films and, you know, the, the kind of long shot thing and the very un-Hollywood uh, style treatment of emotion, like virtually no close-up of it. But when you, if you read those scripts, you know, you think of, I, I think of people like Chekhov, you know, where, particularly in this script where... You have a, a, a story being told in lots of different registers and lots of different, from lots mm. of different points of view. And in order to write something like that, you've got to be engaged in life in a very unaustere way. You've got to be totally interested in lots of different kinds mm. of people and lots of different you know, ways of thinking. Yeah. It's, I mean, I've, I've seen the film and it's, it's sort of haunting me still. I, I, I almost can't react to it immediately. I think with the last film, Amour, you know, there was death and there was sadness and you could sort of come out having cried. Yeah, yeah. This one, it's it, cool, doesn't, it, it doesn't afford you any of those kind of easy sentiments. So if, if, if crying over death is easy, it, it doesn't give you anything, really. And, uh, except, so, you know, you sleep with it for days. I mean, I, it's, it's kind of... Well, I said to him... <laughs> When we first chatted about it, I said, I'm intrigued by this uh, this big hole at the beginning of the script, mm. this vast hole. Is that what it was described as a big hole? Yeah, and I said, this is presumably, you know, I didn't, wouldn't say that's what the film's about, but to a certain extent, I think that that was what I took from the whole script, that there's a big fucking hole that people are falling into. Yeah, yes. Is it a- no, he probably he probably thought you you got the job. But I, mean, I know you got the job, but you kind of nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, my no, job no, now. no. He went, oh, that's interesting, which is what he says to everything. <laughs> because it is. I mean, even there's a scene on a beach with an ice cream seller. You weren't involved in it, where there's a sort of chat about having a Magnum or a Cornetto or a Badois or an Evian. And I, I I think even those brand names are are particularly uh, kind of nothing is precision tool. Nothing. He. When did he? There were a couple of times he gave me huge compliments, and I, I tried to understand when he told me why he was complimenting. Me. I, I was trying to work out what is it about that. And so he said, when at the wedding, um, the announcement of the engagement, and the immigrants had come in, you went to take off one of their backpacks, and he said, Ah, oh, this is genius. How many actors would think? Of it? And I was going, oh, Yeah. Okay, it just said it's just so it's politeness gone crazy. It's kind of you know this crazy juxtaposition right. of stuff. But you know, I'm not sure that's in. It may may not be in, but he <laughs> loved it. Uh, what what else did he? Uh, but you're quite quiet. It's funny you're quite quiet in the film. I don't know if that was you kind of going. Well, he, he didn't talk very loud, my character, uh, or the, or they just turned the, 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 the sound down. But yeah, I mean, not like you're not. No, like, no. He can't hear you, but it's um, you know, it's, it's quite a sort of reined in performance. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What is it? Uh, you know, having come, I mean, mentioned Dad's Army sort yeah. of flippantly, but having yeah, yeah. come off a sort of a big comedy like that uh, as an actor, do uh, do you think, oh God, this is this is challenging me to a new level of performance? We know you for your physicality quite often. Yeah. Did, well, did this one kind of? Do you think well, like, because yeah, it's be- Hannah, I'm going to bring something else? Well, I think he. It's just so. Uh, I mean, Dad's Army is absolutely fantastic to do because you, you have to think very fast, very physically. 
you're sort of inventing a lot of stuff on, on the spot. There's a lot to do in your days. And here you're making film in a very different rhythm and you're listening all the time to what he's saying. And what he's usually saying is, don't take responsibility for the story. That's how I took what he was saying, mm. just don't take responsibility for the story. And as actors, we're sort of hardwired to do that. We're hardwired, however much we think we're not doing that, we are playing just our character, mm. going from A to B to C. They're, because of our background in theatre or whatever, there's just a part of you that's sort of going, will they understand? Will they understand? And he's just, he's absolutely laser-like on, on that. Don't yeah. take responsibility. Because he's, he's, it's his responsibility. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell me about Huppert as well. I mean, I mean, there's Annika as well, obviously, and you think but also working with Isabelle Huppert, that ain't bad. Well, like all the greatest actors I've got to work with, what's, you know, what's inspiring and what's really fascinating is just this in, unquenchable kind of curiosity and desire to get it right and to, to, to the, uh, this is it, I fucked up, this is it. Oh, you know, yeah. and, and I, you know, it's reassuring because that, that's how I feel most of the time. <laughs> this is it, this is the last one, this yeah. is the last gig. Never you know. work again. Yeah, and, and I, I, she knows she knows she's a, held in high esteem, it's not that, it's more a huge hunger to do the best she possibly can. Well, it's work. I mean, she's out, she's out of bed, she's got, you know, turned up to work. Yeah. That's work, right? Yeah. And she's not, you know, she's not being Isabel Huppert 24 hours a day, she's doing the job, you know. Mm, mm. The, um, the sort of, uh, the, the sort of tenor of the piece and the fact that you're, you're, you're in it and part of an ensemble, and this is, this is quite an ensemble for him, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I would say, considering Amour was so tight yeah, recently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I suppose the White Ribbon was an ensemble yeah. as well. It, yeah. Did you all get to sort of be in one play, or do, is, is it one of those? Does, well, he, we, does he work on the sort of normal scenes, or does he? Does that, everyone got to be there for the six weeks of the shoot? Uh, no, 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 no. You, I, I came and went a bit. Uh, I know that. Um, I, I, I know that. Um, the uh, on a big ensemble scenes like when we're at the concert and things like that, we would all obviously be there. But even then, because he's only using bits of mm. that, and he knows what he's using, you'd have you'd have you wouldn't need to be there all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was very very nervous about that cello scene. Mm -hmm. He said, "I want to get this over. I'll be fine." And I said, "I said, what is it about this that's really bothering you?" And he said, "It's just like a big." Set piece scene where there's lots going on, and I'm going, wow, you know, in British TV, they just crank that out, you mm. just crank it out. But he, he wants to get it right, it can be absolutely, nothing. yeah, not a, sh not a whisker wrong, the no. hair out of place. Which is inspiring, I mean, it's inspiring mm. to be around someone like that. Well, I'm very delighted for you that that can be the case. It's very different from when you were last here in Cannes, which was the Tale of Tales, yeah. when you were falling in love with the flea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, falling in love with Isabel Lupe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's progress. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It's progress. It's progress. <laughs> Soon you'll be kissing, <laughs> kissing Kate Moss or something. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that was a very... Working for Matteo Garoni there, yeah. which is... An Italian film, yeah. brilliant as well in yeah. his own way. But I mean, you couldn't get two more different characters. I wouldn't imagine. Although I suppose the directors are, it's precision, isn't it? When they get when they get a hold of you. Yeah, I think as well. He's a much more. He's a, he's a more Latin director mm -hmm. than Michael. You know, he's he's totally emotional, totally visceral, and you know. It wants to laugh and you know grabs you and says that's great and stuff. And it's not quite the same with Michael. It's it's a bit more. It's just it's just you're very aware. I think everyone on the crew, everyone in the cast is very aware that this is one guy's obsession to get this film right. And you're everyone in everyone in the room, everyone in the production. Everyone is making that possible. Yeah, and Isabel is a sort of veteran of. of my, but you wouldn't which, which, even know that, right? I, I I don't think you'd even know that. I I remember you'd see him talking to her, and you'd just go, "Have these people met? Are they even because he's so re relentless?" Mm -hmm. you know, and and I think she's, you know, again she. It's not that she wants to be told off, but I think she wants she she doesn't want to be told it's good if it's not good. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't dare tell her. It was if it wouldn't lie to her for a million years. Exactly. <laughs> um, I thought, although she, I think she's you know extraordinary. The um, 
the, the kind of career now, and now you've got a Hanukkah yeah. on your on your CV. Yeah. What, what, what are you What are you up to next? Is it Is it one of those very strange acting things where you're off to do something completely? Yeah, yeah, different? it is slightly. I finished a French film this week, um, a, 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 a kind of populist French comedy where I'm playing a, um, that photographer Spencer. T- a ver- not, I'm not playing Spencer Turnick, but I'm playing a version of him, like a guy, the guy who photographs All the naked groups of naked people, people. Yeah. and he goes to a French village that is really struggling with unemployment stuff and he proposes to do that there. so I finished that this week but this, I was been filming that with Jurassic World 3 so the, the two things are kind of nicely balanced and you're in Jurassic World 3 yeah are you the... uh, Jurassic World 2 yeah 2 <laughs> I'm sure there will be a 3 era. <laughs> wow so you're working green screens and dinosaurs and yes doing that and then I'm going which will be great in about 3 weeks time I'll start Detectorists which will be just which is this sitcom I do with Mackenzie about metal detectors? Which is just we just go to Suffolk for six weeks and do that. And you can you can do that. You can say, well, I'm doing the Hollywood blockbuster. I'm doing Cannes Film Festival, and then I'm well, off with Mackenzie. It's Crook not that I say I can do it. I mean, people people think I can, so I think oh, well, maybe I can. I I don't I don't think I could do any of it. It's it's literally like you feel you know Jason in your world and like in my world. It's a huge privilege to do what I do. You know, and and, and I I'm very aware of the privilege that it is you know it's not that I take it lightly but it's just fantastic to have that contract that's the only MO you know mm. it, what about all this can I know we, we met, met on a boat in Venice and here we are full circle we're on, a, on a jetty and you love yeah, all this I've love heard this. you I know you love it <laughs> I get all excited I? <laughs> I find it very um, I, I, I find it gets harder and harder all of this I find like tonight I find that all intimidating to be honest and I used to before I knew about it I used to think, oh, that'd that's be great, that'd be great, what it's all about. that'd be great. And it isn't. I find it it's sort of the opposite of what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm trying is. to disappear all the time. Although, or, yeah, but then don't you play a part when you're going up that red carpet? You know what I mean, in a way. I mean, Isabel's brilliant uh, at it. She's done yes. it a hundred times. Yes. Uh, I don't feel that. I, I, I feel oddly out of place. Yeah. <laughs> when I was growing up, when you and I were listening to New Wave records in the 1980s, neither of us wanted to be on a red carpet. And there's a part of me that's sitting on my shoulder going, what, what a you wanker, you <laughs> idiot. What the fuck are you doing? And you've got to go up those steps and wave. <laughs> you know, and it's just this... Uh, people that I've admired in my life, uh, the huge majority of them will never stand on a, on a red carpet. <laughs> and yet... You know, Hanukkah does it and Hubert does it. They know the value of it. It's marketing. Mm. And, you know, it's can. Yes. There's I, his 70 years of history yeah, 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 as well. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, even Orson Welles managed I, yeah, to do it. Yeah, I don't it. do it down. I'm just saying no, that my I, personal response to it is, is that I find myself getting more and more... Um, not freaked out, but just shy of it. I, I find it all so much noise. Yeah, and I do think, as an actor, especially one like you, Sort of chameleonic yeah. to the extreme, really. As we've even just enumerated yeah. five, four projects there, yeah. and you are a very physical kind of protean kind of yeah. being. To then kind of have yourself kind of nailed to an image that might be then, oh, well, he's the guy in the black tie on the red carpet. Yes, and who the fuck is that yeah, guy? Exactly. Anyway? And who cares about all of that? I yeah. mean, and and really, who cares about me? I'm not wearing anyone's. I mean, I, I'm not there modelling or anything. No, a lot of people are busy clothes. modelling. Will you wear some clothes then? I hope to. I hope to. I hope to wear clothes. <laughs> but of course, anything's possible. That's the best we can expect. <laughs> a clothed Toby Jones. <laughs> and he's the best you can expect. <laughs> it's, listen, whatever it is, I'm really. Oh, as, as, always very pleased thank for you, you and Jones, to see it and, and, and to nail a, a Hanukkah. What did you What did you make of the film off the record? Off the record, I look, listen, I was watching it hypnotised, hypnotised, really? because every shot is a masterpiece, right? I didn't know where this was going, and normally with Hanukkah, it sort of goes somewhere, and you're like, left devastated. This, again, I think it's a new thing for him. It doesn't go anywhere, really. And yeah. it leaves you thinking, my God, maybe, maybe the clue was... Maybe it actually finished about 20 minutes previously, really. Yeah. Um, and we're watching because I know that he likes to play with our narrative expectations. So in fact, the, the climax wasn't where you picked the climax to be. That actually the point of it was earlier. But it ends with a sort of Beckettian shot, doesn't it? Of, of literally like happy days. It, it, it does. Yeah. It does certainly end with that. Um, that people don't know whether if it's tragic or sad or funny, um, and it's probably all of those things. Yes. You know. It's very odd because you know it's it's a masterpiece. Is it? But it's not a masterpiece in the same way that the White Ribbon is a masterpiece, or the Amor is a masterpiece, yeah, or Hidden yeah. is a masterpiece. Yeah. And yet, I, I don't say it's. I, did, I don't say I didn't 
like it or that it was wrong because it's talking about massive, massive things. Basically, through an ice cream seller who has to kind of yeah. sell a magnum. When well, they used to probably sell a uh, in glass at yeah, 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 and now yeah. it's a, now kids are asking for magnums. It's about that kind of generation falling into the hole, as you say. Yeah. And I think the clue was in the first, almost that's almost the second shot of the movie. Yeah. This big hole, and the probably end, ends there. I mean, he did talk a lot about the special effects in the film. He was obviously, you know, concerned about them and. That finding the hole and finding how they were going to do that effect, and that was a big concern. Yeah, I mean, it looks amazing, I have to say. You just think, how, how have they done that? I mean, you're in Jurassic World 3, when you're yeah. 2 and 3, maybe Which just... Is that all the time. Yeah, so, so you get a bit bored with the effect. When, when Hannigan uses an effect, you're like, oh! <gasps> so... Yeah, it's horrendous. And the more I talk about it, the more I talk about it with you, the more the film is even perhaps the best thing he's ever done and the best thing I've ever seen. Right, right. But watching it was... It, it's such shocking experience that you're sort of jarred out of any even a bit I, I bet that I bet that breaking of the finger did not oh my god yeah people laughed though even because at the pure horror of it they laughed it's a mother breaking I mean it's Shakespearean or Greek yeah. isn't it it's a mother breaking a, oh my god I mean uh, yes and you think what's just happened as well it, the mysteries continue yeah. Toby Jones yeah. up the red carpet that's a mystery <laughs> lovely to it's see lovely you lovely to see you Jeff.